so we have successfully completed our deployments and our migrations and we've checked out all the wiring everything's good so before we start really building out the um, our digital bank here we need to think about running tests and not just running tests by console logging and checking things after the fact but being able to run tests before the fact because remember we're going to be putting things up in the on on a blockchain and then once it's up it's up so we want to make sure that everything that we're writing checks out as much as we can beforehand and the more efficient and the better tests that we have running beforehand the easier it's going to be the better it's going to be in the long in the long term for putting up our smart contracts in general so this is this is a very good practice and this is um, a real world sense of how to actually get things done uh, working in professional environments. So that's why we're going to include this in our course. So the first thing we want to do is actually create our own um, directory for tests. So you want to go back to the DeFi staking application. Make sure you're there in the main directory. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, we're going to make a new directory by typing in mkdir space tests. And now we're going to cd into tests and we'll create a new uh, file. And we can just do this on the console by typing in touch decentral bank dot test dot js. Hit enter. Okay, and I'm going to cd out of this. So we're going to go back to the DeFi staking app. And now let's open up our code and we should see our tests folder over here right on the left hand side and the decentral bank test.js over here now there's two extensions which we're going to be using here and bringing in to act as a framework for running our tests and that's going to be mocha which is included in truffle which is a very popular testing very popular testing framework and we're going to bring in the library chai which is also really great for running assertions uh, before we write out our before we write out our skeleton here for our tests let's just take a look together at mocha and chai briefly and recap so mocha you got you want to go to mochajs.org and we see here that mocha it's a javascript test framework that runs on node.js in the browser so so very similar to what we've been doing with the truffle console we can and it allows for flexible and accurate reporting and if you scroll down you can see installations getting started and then you have examples of what we're going to be doing we're going to be writing these descriptions we're just going to support what we want to describe we're going to use it to send what the message should be and we're going to be using our assertions and we're going to and then we're going to be using assertions so that it should return some sort of value and then we use this assertion to equal one or the other and we're going to see this together so don't worry if this doesn't make sense right now we're going to be doing a lot of this and as for chai chai essentially it's an assertion library for node and it can be delightfully paired with any javascript testing framework right sounds as great as a campari soda or something like that for coding okay i just thought that was just it's just a funny just some funny wording here on the website i like it all right so chai has several interfaces that allow de developers to choose the most comfortable and tdd assert style provides a more classical feel which is what we're going to be using so we're going to be using the should uh, you know so so should assert expect these are you know this is what you're going to see a lot of all right so let's bring everything in and get this and get this show on the rizode so the first thing we want to do is actually bring in the contracts right because we want to run tests on the contracts and we can do that by scrolling back up to our deployment or deploy contracts and we see here how we brought in the artifacts uh we brought in our contracts using artifacts require set them to some variables. Let's do the same thing here for our test. So I'm just gonna copy that, and paste it over. Okay, and then, okay, so now we have that. The next up, next up we wanna bring in chai. So to bring in the library, we just gotta do require, and we're gonna do dot use require chai as promised. And chai as promised is basically just an extension so that we can use chai with promises and that way we don't have to handle it ourselves and what do i mean exactly by that well we're gonna see but it's just important for us to bring this in 
And that's all you really need to know right now. And finally, we're gonna be using should. So we're gonna bring in dot should. And this is everything that we're gonna need to run our tests. And we're gonna make a function for our contract, not contract, contract. Oops, what the heck was that? Yeah, contract, okay. And it's going to basically be, what's it gonna be here? We're gonna want the accounts and we're gonna want to be the decentral bank, right? Because we're running our tests on that. And we're gonna have it as a function. And essentially all of our code is gonna go here for testing. And oops, we wanna run the arrow function like this. So I want to remove this parenthesis and add it over here at the end. All right, all right, so let's save that. And now we basically have everything we need to start building out our tests, okay? So we brought in our contracts and we brought in the require library. We've got Mocha good to go and the skeleton to start writing out our con to start writing out to start writing out some contract tests. So in the next video, let's start testing things out. All right, so I want to just stop for a second just in case you're not familiar with ES6 arrow functions in JavaScript, all right? These anonymous arrow functions in ES6. So if you're not familiar with that, then go through this video if you need a refresher because we are we have switched our functions from just writing out regular functions to writing these ES6 functions in our tests and we are going to do this in the front end when we're working with React as well. And there's a very good reason why we're doing this. So I want to explain what it is, refresh you, or if you don't know what it is, then take this video so you understand, because otherwise you now you're seeing me type in, you know, async like this, and you're probably looking at this and wondering, so you're probably looking at this and wondering, well, you know what async is, we've got the async await, but then you're, you're looking at probably this, and you're saying, well, what is this equal? Is this, this is like the opposite of, <laughs> greater than equal to and no this is actually an arrow function all right this is an anonymous arrow function it's an anonymous arrow function just like we can write anonymous functions let's actually break this down with examples in the IDE uh, and if you want to code along I'm actually you would actually have to create a dot JS not a dot soul because this is JavaScript remember so arrow functions dot JS but I'm gonna provide this resource in case you want to know all right so so what I'm telling you is that there's two ways to write functions in JavaScript, okay? Well, there's more than two ways, but two syntax ways we're gonna look at, to look at uh, arrow functions and regular, all right? Now, when we write a regular function, we should know by now, you should know by now in this course, even working with Solidity, even having an idea that when you wanna write a function, right, you write the word function then you bring in the arguments, and it's very similar, and then you return what it is. And this is how you would write a function in JavaScript, all right? So we say function, this, then we return. We have two arguments, we wanna add them up, so we add them up, all right? I have another example of a function here. We wanna see if a number is more positive than zero. If it's a positive number in general, right? Because any number more positive than zero is gonna be positive or equal to. So we return n for number. We've got another one here that's gonna return a random number. We've seen these functions. You write function, all right? This is just a method, math.random. It just returns a random, all right? And then finally, we've got this for function at the bottom. And this function is an anonymous function. It means that this function here at the bottom, we don't even name. We don't have to name it. We don't have to name our functions. And the reason why we're not gonna name it is because we don't have to store that information. We're just gonna run this in. We're gonna run this function and that's it. All right, so that's how you write regular functions. Now. What if we wanted to write these in arrow functions? Well, why would we? Why would we even want to write? Well, write this in arrow functions. Well, there's one really good reason, which I'm going to explain at the end. But for now, the other reason, something to think about that makes sense is just that the syntax, it's easier. It's easier to write it out. It's easier to write it out. So how would we convert this regular function to a arrow function, all right? Well, the first thing is that the function's assumed. So we don't have to write function. We don't even have to write function. If we want to make a, a, if we want to convert this, we, we can just say sum two, all right? We can just say sum two. 
but we still need to say it's a variable, right? Because we still have to store this information. That's why we write functions. So we can use another ES6, uh, another ES6 syntax here and bring in let. So let sum2, okay, let sum2 creates the variable space, but we don't have to write function. And then what we want to do is we set it to what? Well, to the argument. So we'll say let sum2 equal the function. And this is where we'd write the function. This is where we'd write the function a and b out like this. And that's the arrow function. And we can say return, oops, not true, a plus b, right, like that. And this is the same. See, do you notice this curly brackets? This is the same thing. The only difference, forget this async, forget the async. This just makes it asynchronous. This is, this is an arrow function that is anonymous. This is the same thing as this, except there, there's no arguments and there is no variable that we're setting it to. And we're going to see how it's even more similar. And how can it be even more similar? Well, what else could we do? Well, in arrow functions, return is implicit. And so are the curly brackets. So we don't even need to write return. And we can get rid of the curly brackets. So we can put everything on the same line. Everything can go on the same line. And so this, let sum2 equal a comma b, and then arrow fun this is the arrow function, this is the variable, is the same as this. Now there's one... There is a key difference. We're going to look at that after. Don't, we don't think it's exactly the same what it can do, but it essentially is the same thing for what we want it to do for the purposes of this. All right. All right. Let's convert another one. Let's convert another. One. It's fun, right? Let's convert these these older functions to these arrow functions. All right, which are not even that new anymore in text terms. All right. So we do the same thing, right? Let is positive equal n right? Arrow function, bring in the function, curly brackets, return, n should be uh, greater than or equal to zero, right? Right. Now we can do the same thing. We can say, hey, wait a minute, we don't even need this return. We don't need it. It's implicitly there. We don't even need the, we don't need the brackets. We're removing the brackets. And in fact, here's another thing. One single parameter, if you got one single parameter in an arrow function, you don't even need the, the parentheses, these are implied as well. Only if you have one. If we had multiple, we couldn't start doing this. Uh, you know, we couldn't start doing uh, n value, whatever, you know, but if it's, since it's one, we can do this. We can do this like this, all right? See, a and b is two, and it's just one. And just like that, we've converted the second one. What about this third one? Why don't you go ahead, pause the video, see if you can convert it. Okay, so hopefully you gave that a shot. All right, this one also. So what can we do with this? We could say, well, let random number equal this. And would you look at that? Look at this. Just take a look. Oh, wait a minute. Return. <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting too excited. Uh, we'll say return. I'm, I was jumping ahead. Math.random, and then we can do the same thing. Get rid of the return. All right. And if you got this, that's excellent. And would you just look at this for a second? Look at this outline, just this part, and look at the async, right? This async, and we had the async here. Doesn't this look similar? Doesn't this look similar? And I just want you to pay attention. I just want you to pay attention to that. And again, we can even get rid of these brackets. Now, unless we have multiple things happening, we want to keep the brackets, right? But if this is the end of the statement, then that's the end of the statement. We would want to keep these brackets if we had a lot of things happening, like we do in our code. So we contain all the information in the script. But since this is all it is, we can remove the brackets. So that's an important thing to note. We keep these brackets in our code as we're moving along because we have multiple things happening. But if it was just one thing, if it was just a weight tether, it's just a weight tether or whatever. All right, so just something to think about, something to think about. But here, we can actually remove the brackets. Now let's do this last one. Let's do this last one. Let's do it together. All right, so I'm going to convert this last one. So document.addEventListener, all right. And you know, let's just copy paste the whole thing. And here, function, remember, this last function is different than these other functions. These ones are explicitly named, 
right? This one, we don't store with a name. So this is just a pure anonymous function that gets executed and that's it. So if we want to write this out, how do we write this out? Well, we remove the function. We don't have to name it. And just like that, we've got our anonymous function. Just like that, right? And there it is. So we don't have to write this function. We just bring this out. We have the arrows and we're done. And we have our anonymous function. All right, so hopefully this helps for you to understand and understand these arrow functions. You're not getting confused now as things start to get more advanced. We're moving, I know we're moving more quickly along here. We're trying to get this project done together. But I want to make sure, I want to make sure that you understand why, you know, you understand the syntax. Because, you know, if you're confused, it's not necessarily from just a lack of understanding the big picture, it's just because you don't know something like this. And this is something very important to know. So why do we do this? Here's the big question. Like, okay, besides the fact that, okay, maybe I just like the syntax better. Really, Clarion, that you're just trying to confuse us or you're gonna put some kind of fancy arrow keys here? Well, no, no. Actually, there's a bigger reason here that's more important. And what that reason is the this keyword, all right? It's the this which comes from our constructor. And in general, especially working with React and this, it can be, there is a big difference with this, how this works, this keyword works in a regularly written out function versus an arrow function. And what is that difference? In an arrow function, the arrow function can actually, will access the global, will, will globally access this. It can actually take this. So if you have a special property, like if we had a name, this.name, and we needed to access name in our arrow function, a plus b plus this plus name, we could actually access it, right? From our constructor, we could access this. Don't even worry about the constructor. Just think, all right, this, this dot name, we've got this name that belongs to this. In this arrow function, we would be able to access this, this, which is outside of the function. But in this function, if in the regularly written function, if I wrote a plus b plus this plus name, this dot name would have to be redefined in the scope. Remember we talked about scope? it will not be able to access it. It will not be able to access it like this. All right, you can bind it and there's other things you can do, but in, but in general, moving ahead, this, is, this really matters. You know, this, this make, the arrow functions for this makes a lot of things easier when working in JavaScript constructors. And so that's why, that's why it just makes sense for most cases, most cases moving forward, when you're writing in JavaScript, arrow functions, you know, most other coding languages have this already, you know, and their function, they can access that this. And JavaScript now, final, now, JavaScript can do this because of the arrow functions. And so in most cases, you want to go with the arrow functions because of this reason. Now, there could be a very, there could be particular instances, particular instances where you want to just keep it local, the this in a function. But for the most part, no. And that's why moving ahead in our final project, when we're doing these descriptions, when we're moving on to the front end, we're gonna see some arrow functions out there. So now hopefully you have a better understanding of arrow functions and this whole async thing with our describe, what these parentheses are and why they're working the way they work, all right? So you can review it, you can go through it. And if you get confused then by these anonymous functions in the code, you know, I got the final project over here start seeing all these arrows like this and you're like, oh no, what is this? What is this? Don't worry, we haven't written this out. Don't get confused. This is the final version I just downloaded to show you. Um, but yeah, you know, when you see all this stuff later on, when you see these async anonymous functions, this is an anonymous function, all right? This is an anonymous function. I could write function out like this, but we're writing it out and, and we're using the arrows and it's just better practice. It's just better practice. All right, hopefully that helps you out. Let's get back to the course. Let's get back to the project, all right? Back to the project, let's stay focused. Great work coming this far. And if you have any questions, just go to the Discord and ask over there, always helps. All right, see you for the exercise, I believe, after this, bye-bye. Okay, so let's start building out our testing here. Uh, before we begin, I see already I made a couple mistakes. I guess it's Monday and I was a little bit too gung-ho uh, to realize the first thing I want to do is I want this contract to actually have the same camel case. So we're going to go with the string to central bank like this. Secondly, 
this is going to be our arguments. So there's a space here. We've got to get rid of that space. And this argument should be closed over here because it's a essentially it's an arrow function, right? So we're doing a contract like this to central bank accounts. And we're going to be grab and then we're going to be putting the code and then we're going to be putting the code in here. And accounts will be closed like this. And then we want to close our contract like this. OK, awesome. So the first thing we want to do is run our describe. So we're going to do describe, not the scribble. <laughs> OK. And what are we describing? Well, we're describing, we're going to, well, what's the first test that we want to run in here? Well, the first test that I want to run for us is an assertion using the chai library. And with assertion, we can check different kind of things. So we're going to check equality. And what we want to see is that we have successful name matching on our contracts, just so we know that the contracts are being deployed correctly and uploaded to the right names. This is an important equality test. So to do that, we're going to go with mock tether deployment. All right. And now everything that we put in our describe essentially is going to run the test that we want to create. It's the description of our test. You can think of it like that. So mock tether deployment, we want to run this asynchronously. So we're going to bring in our async pattern here with the arrow function. And now we're going to use it. And it allows us to bring in a description. So what we want to say is it matches name successfully. It matches names successfully. That's pretty good English. Okay. And then within it, just like within description, now we can work within our it parameter and we can it and we can run another async pattern here to fetch our information because we're going to need to get our contract information to make sure these tests run successfully. And we're going to create some variables here. So we're going to say let tether and we're going to set tether to what do you think? Well, we want tether to deploy the contract, right? So we want to say let tether is going to equal await for tether dot new, right? So we're going to get an instance of everything from our tether. Okay. And then we're also going to create a name and we're going to set our name to what do you think? Well, we want to match the name so we can actually get the name from tether, right? So we can say constant, let's make it a constant variable name is going to equal tether dot name, right? We can just call the name and grab it that way. Okay. And then finally, we can now run our assertion. So we can say assert dot equal, and we can put in what we need for this. So we want to say that the name or what do you, and, and equal, and this is essentially where we're running the logic for the test itself. So what do you think it should be equal to? Go ahead and give that a try. All right, hopefully you had some success giving that a shot. If not, don't worry about it. Let's go through it together. So what we want to happen in here is that we want the name, okay, because remember, we want to match the name successfully to equal a string value. And what is the string value? Well, the string value will be actually the name, right, of whatever it is. And in this case, it's something like mock, uh, mock tether token. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and give this save this and actually run this test and see if we've actually and see if we've written everything out correctly didn't make any mistakes here and that it's hooked up and we can actually run this hook and that it's hooked up correctly as well and mocha can be running tests for us so we're going to go into back into our terminal okay and now that we're back on our terminal all we have to do is run truffle test so fingers crossed that we got this right all right, so we everything compiled all right, but it's there should be a test running. It says there's zero passing. So that's a problem. That's a big problem. And I can't even understand exactly. It doesn't really tell me much. It says that there's nothing passing. So that means that it's not even, what does zero passing mean? Well, if we go back in our code, zero passing just means that nothing is actually happening, right? Like the code isn't even 
I don't know why this is up here, constant assert require console. That is weird, let's get rid of that. I don't know how that even got there, so save. Well, we have our test folder, right? And Oh boy, okay, so I named the file tests with an S, but Mocha is only going to register test without an S. It's searching for the test, effectively what's happening is that our Mocha, our Mocha framework, which is coming out of Truffle here, is running through our main directory and it's searching for this test folder. But if it's called tests with an S, right, it's specific. It's not gonna run some kind of AI algorithm to find tests because that could be something else that can mess up a whole lot of things. So this is a typical case of making one letter a one letter mistake which can ruin all of your tests. So if I go back to the test folder, I wanna rename it. So I'm gonna go to rename here and I'm just gonna get rid of the S. And we'll call it test, okay. And all right, let's go back into our truffle and run the test again. And hopefully this time Mocha is gonna register the folder. So I'm gonna type in truffle test. I don't have to type it in, I just press up and it comes back. And fingers crossed this time our test will actually be identified. Everything's up to date, same thing as last time. Oh, okay, wow. All right, so the contract is being recognized. The test is actually running. Okay, so it says that zero is passing again, which is not great. But it also says that one is failing. And you know what? I'm actually happy about this just because it means that at least it's recognizing our test, even though our test is failing. So let's see why it's failing here. Assertion error, expected events, match name successfully. So. There's an assertion error, and we were trying to assert equality for the name matching. Mock tether token to equal. So <laughs> it's a little bit ambiguous, but it seems it seems to point to me here that there's a problem with the name matching. Let's take a look. Let me go back here. So we let tether equal weight, blah, blah, blah. So assert.equal name. So the tether name to be mock. Oh, <laughs> Mock. Okay, right. So this is a typo. This should be mock. Maybe you guys spotted it. It's, uh, I'm just going to save that, fix that up, pretend like it never happened, go back into the truffle test, run truffle test again. All right, let's try it again. Hopefully this time it works. And we're still failing. And we're getting the same assertion error. Mock tether token. So let's go back. So I want the name to equal mock tether token. If I go check in our contract, uh, tether, mock tether token. So these names match for sure. Okay, so let's just take a look, describe and match his name. That tether, oh. Okay, so we're running this async pattern again, right? For and so for our async pattern, we're running it to get tether, but then when we try to get the name from tether, we need to run the async pattern again. So we should add in a wait over here, right? Because otherwise it's not going to stop for the name, and I think that's why we're getting this assertion problem, because it can't actually find anything, which is why that error message is so strange and it expected an event and it didn't actually receive anything. So let's go ahead and run it one more time here, truffle test. And there we go. Okay, so we are passing our test and we can see that the contract is the central bank. We have our mock tether deployment and the name matches successful. Okay, awesome. So it is working. That's always a good feeling. Um, <laughs> feeling right? Okay, so going back in our code, for your exercise, go ahead and do the same thing, but uh, try to do it for the reward token, right? So match the name successfully on the reward token. Shouldn't be too difficult. For bonus, you can do the symbol if you're feeling a little extra. So go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, you can pause the video now, and then we'll run through it together. Okay, so hopefully you had some success with that. If not, don't worry about it. We're gonna go through it together. So all we really gotta do to, to um, to check the success to check a successful name match for the reward token is copy this over 
as let's say a template and just switch some of the configurations of the names. So mock tether deployment, we'll call it reward token, matches name successfully. Here we want RWD, right? Our, uh, our variables are gonna be reward. And we've got our name here and the name should just be reward token. And it really sh and ooh, and this should be reward, reward dot name, right? We're not getting it from Tether, otherwise it'll give us the mock Tether token, and that's not going to work out. So we'll do reward token like that. Save. All right, let's go back to the terminal and rerun Truffle test. All right, and so our mock Tether deployment is successful, and our reward tokens uh, match is successful. So we got two successful names. Both of them are passing everything is going great in the next video we're going to refactor this code because you know a little bit of this repetition is not not very necessary and continue to build more tests as we develop our descent our digital bank together very exciting stuff great work and see you in the next video bye all right so let's just refactor this code and set it up a bit better because we're going to be writing a much more code as we continue. And as we make more and more tests, we want to just set this up so we have a bit more of reusability here. So, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is actually use the, well, the first thing actually we can do is we can set up our constant vari uh, we can set up our variables or let variables at the top here. So we can just say let tether and reward over here, okay, and let's get rid of this. Oh, actually, that's fine for now. And then what we can do is we can bring in this before. And what before can actually do for us is that any code that we add to before for our tests will essentially run first before anything. That's basically what it means. So you can put before pretty much anywhere in the code. We're gonna keep it on the top though. And we're gonna run, and then whatever we choose to run inside of this will in effect run before before our tests, before our descriptions. So what we wanna do is before we're gonna go async. And then we're gonna set our, and then we're gonna set our variables here, our tether and reward instead of in here. So we can actually just await for tether like this. And we can say tether equals away like that. And then we can do the same thing for reward as well. And then we can just get rid of these. So we can delete those, add reward over here, tether over here, and not reward, sorry, this should be RWD. And let's rename it, yeah, here, let's just re rename reward to RWD. So if I change RWD up here, then in our description under constant name equals await reward.name, we're gonna change it to RWD as well, just for reward. So let's save this and let's run the truffle test and see if we're still good to go here. So, so I'm back in the terminal, I'm running truffle test and there we go. Okay, so two passing tests, boom. Mock, mock tether deployment and the reward token Awesome, okay. Okay, so it looks like we are ready to keep going here. Now that we have these tests basically set up, we have the before method set up, what we wanna do is, what we wanna do here is actually complete the rest of our deployment migration tests. So effectively we're checking if this name of tether is successful, we're checking if the reward token is successful, Let's go ahead and check that also the transferring to our decentral bank that we just, you know, because you know how we transfer all of our tokens of our reward tokens to the central bank, that that is successful. And the transferring of 100 mock tether tokens to our investor is also successful. Okay, so let's add these tests as well to our testing of the central bank over here. So, so what we can do is already we can leverage this template that we're building. You see we have tether rewards, so we can add as well to central bank here. And right under here, this is essentially this is essentially where we're loading our contracts, right? So we can even comment here load contracts, right? Because this is where we are getting our tether contract and our reward contract. And by putting it before we know that this runs first and foremost, and it's the most important. So we can also fetch our Decentral Bank, 
and let's get that as well. So let's do the central bank is going to equal a weight. But what we want to actually check for inside of our decentral bank specifically is going to be the addresses of reward and tether. Because remember, we are actually getting in our deployment the addresses over here, the addresses over here for the reward address and the tether address. So we want to check to see that that's coming through in our test as well. So we're going to go in here and we can type in rwd dot address address and tether dot address okay so now we're loading our three contracts with the addresses of the reward and tether address to our decentral bank next item on the agenda here is going to be to check to see that we transfer or to check to see that we transfer transfer all of our reward tokens to the decentral bank right just like how we do it and our deploy contract up here. And the code is actually quite similar to how we'd want to, if, to how we're writing it in our await, uh, how we're writing it in our deployment JavaScript, right? So we're going to, we're going to await, await. And what are we going to be wait, awaiting? Well, it's the transfer, right? We're awaiting the transfer. So we're running transfer again, because if you remember in our reward token, we have a transfer function. So we can leverage this transfer function, which takes an address to and a value. And that's what we're doing exactly. It's the same thing that we're doing in our test because we're testing to see that it works first. So we're gonna go reward.transfer like this. The address, which is we want it to transfer to the decentral bank dot address and the value. And we want the value to be 1 million. And we remember with this whole way conversion thing, it's a lot of zeros. So we can actually write the conversion right here by bringing in, if you remember, our web3 utilities. So we could say web3.utils.utils. Dot .utils dot, we want to transfer two way, right? Because it's in Ethereum. So we're going to say two way. And then we put in the amount. So now that we're transferring it to way, we can actually put in the amount in Ethereum. So we could just write 1 million. Now, oops, and I need to close this. Now, this works. Now, this, now this would work and everything would be great. But as Greg also mentions, in, as Greg also mentions in his video when he goes through this, you know, it's important to note it's important as developers that we're not re that we're not reiterating and rewriting the same code over and over and over again so essentially this could this formatting this balance form reformatting which suits our interests much better is something that we may be using often and instead of rewriting it over and over again why not just turn it into a helper function to make our code much more robust right so to do that it's quite simple it to do that it's very it's it's very simple to do, so why not just do it? All we have, all we really have to do is just write a function, and we can call this function tokens, and tokens can take the argument of an integer, so a number, all right, and and what's this going to return? What is tokens going to return? Well, tokens is going to return essentially this, right? So we can return this, but instead of an actual string, we can use our argument. So it will be number. And we want this number to be ether. So we do this like that. We add our argument for it to be ether as the second argument over here, uh, second parameter, and then now Instead of putting all this, we can just call our function tokens. And now we can just put in the number, right? And in this case, instead of writing, I don't know, 18 decimals for a million, we can actually just write a million. So that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Uh, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 100, 1 million. Okay, awesome. Okay, awesome. And so finally, the last thing we want to check for our deployments here, like for our deployment testing, is the transferring of a hundred of a hundred tokens to our investor, right? Like we did over here.
And if we see over here, basically, we transfer 100 Tether, mock Tether tokens to account number one, and we put in the amount over here, right? And so it's pretty much the exact same thing that we want to do for this, except for we need to also specify, in this case, where it's coming from. Um, and we do that essentially like this. So first off, let's comment transfer 100 mock, muck, 100 mock tethers to, what's his face, to the investor or to the customer or whatever, okay. And we can say await, we're gonna go tether.transfer and we are transferring where? Right, because when we check the transfer, the first thing has to be the address, right? Same thing as last time. But this case, in this case, we're not transferring to the central bank. So we can actually put in the accounts that we have up here. All right. And we specify which account. We want it to be the first account. Remember, the first account is going to be the second account over here. Sorry, not the first account, the second account, which is um, the second in the array. And we do that by typing in one. Okay, and then after that, we put our amount. So we can just type in tokens. And this time, we put in 100. And then our final argument is going to be um, from where it's coming. And we do this actually by writing from. So it's where it's coming from. So we create an object here. And we say it's from where. And we want it to come from the accounts. Which account do we want it to come from? Well, from the owner account. So that would be which one? zero right and so if you remember if we go back to our tether contract over here and we check transfer we see that we have an address we have the address to we have the address which is two and the value so we have the address here we have the value and and then we grab it from our contract here from our accounts from the zero account so how can we make this code even better right so this should work right the logic's fine everything's perfect it's a little bit refactored it looks nice easy to read and follow but what could we do to actually take this one step even further well what we could do is we could actually go into the arrays themselves and we can do that by selecting the arrays like this and then naming each array so we get access to each array so i can go uh, the owner which is the first account and the customer, which could be the second account, right? So instead of constantly having to do account zero, account one, blah, blah, now we have a better name method. We have a better name set up here. So I can actually re, so I can actually rewire this now by taking owner and replacing the account zero one with just owner and customer from account zero, like that. And that just reads a whole lot better, doesn't it? All right, so let's just run this test and see if we're good right now. So I'm going to go to the terminal and type in truffle test. Okay, so our before hook looks So it looks like we're getting an error with our before hook. Let's take a quick look. And okay, so I see that I actually want to be transferring uh, from the decentral bank. This decentral bank because this is what's awaiting for these addresses. So that's where there's the mistake over here. And let's save and run the truffle test again. All right, so we fixed that typo. And await tether.transfer owner from customer. Oh, wait, this is, rever this is reverted, right? We want to transfer 100 mock tokens to the customer. So I did this backwards in my brain for some reason. But essentially, right now we're transferring to the owner 100 tokens from the customer which really isn't fair because it's supposed to be the <laughs> because the customer is supposed to be receiving or the investor is supposed to be receiving the 100 mock tokens so it should be customer and this should be owner so let's save that and try again let's go back to the terminal back to the terminal here and all right amazing so we are passing excellent 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 Report. All right, so let's try and clarify transfer versus transfer from. Oops. And I think it's going to show up. There it is. All right, transfer versus transfer from. And just 
fair warning, I'm not very good with this whiteboard animation. The animation isn't very good, but I'm going to explain it clearly for you because I understand how transfer versus transfer from can be confusing. So if you don't mind the terrible animations, just focus on what I'm saying and hopefully this is going to clarify everything because this is something that's important for you to understand. Why do we have a transfer versus transfer from? All right, so let's pretend this is you, all right? This is you. Oh, fixing the R over there. And this is another entity, all right? Another person. It could be another uh, company another that built the application. It could be anything else that has their own wallet. So this is your wallet. This is another wallet. And this is a smart contract, all right? So this is you. This is another entity. That means that this is your wallet with your tokens, and this is their wallet, and this is a smart contract, all right? And again, again, just use your imagination. Just bear with me here, okay? We're going to need the tokens. Excellent. All right, and so here we go. So you, other, right? There you are. You're a circle. Your wallet is these tokens. The other people are a circle. They have their tokens, and you have a smart contract. Transfer versus transfer from, all right? All right, we got the smart contract coming up. All right, so if you want to transfer directly, if you want to transfer directly, if you have tokens and you say, hey, I just want to transfer some tokens. You know, I want to, I want to stake some tokens into this smart contract. I want to do an exchange. I'm going to transfer some over to this. It's just you. It's directly. It comes from here. So it goes through you. You make the transfer, and that's it. And, and, that's, and that's it, right? That's it. But... But, but, what if, what if you go to a DAP application, right? And the DAP application wants to do something, or you want the DAP application to do something, but in exchange, the DAP application needs to transfer funds from, from you. Because it's not, they're not you. They can't do that. You know, if you want the DAP application to do something with your funds, they have to get it from you, right? Right? So, you're, so in order for them to get it from you, they're going to have to go to you, right? Then you have to see what, what the heck is going on and say, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, this is fine. And then approve it and then let them go to your tokens, right? That's transfer from. That's transfer from. And then so you have to approve it. That's why the approval is so important. And after you prove it, then it can go back, you know, it can go back and do whatever needs to be done, or it could even go back to their tokens, all right? Now, why would it go back to their tokens? Well, think about direct deposit. Think about a just direct deposit. When you buy something, right, when you, when you, when you make a purchase, you're not actually, you're purchasing to a company, right? You're purchasing and you put in your PIN code all right, and you do a deposit, that's got to go through. You got to approve it. If you're going to be, if they're going to be taking that, those funds, you got to think about it like that. It's a transfer from because the company doesn't have your account. You know, if you go to Walgreens or you go to Walmart, Walgreens and Walmart can't just go into your bank account and take things, right? Just like that. You have to approve it. You have to approve it. And when you approve something, that means that the, the transfer isn't directly from you. It has to come from you from somewhere else. And it's a little bit tricky, it's a little bit tricky, but it's not, it's super intuitive. So you just gotta, hopefully this will help you help to clarify, help to clarify. So go through it again. I promise if you go through it a couple of times, it'll make sense. There's not a lot out there. There's really not a lot out there. If you want more, if you want more uh, pertinent information, you could actually go to the, um, where is it here? If you go to the actual Ethereum or EIPS, but I found it on Reddit, and it, they, they explain it, you know, they, they explain it. So, you, as you can see, we've got the function transfer, which takes an address to, and a value, right? And then it's going to just return whether it's successful or not. And that's it, right? It, it's just, it's coming from a direct transfer. But if it's a transfer from, if it's transfer from, then that's got to come from somewhere, and then go to somewhere. And there needs to be an approval process there in order for that to happen because wherever it's coming from, that from address needs to approve it, right? They got to approve it, all right? 
So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. See, it even says this function transfer from allows a third party who has authorization to spend on your behalf, which is, call, uh, which is called with approved to send tokens. So if someone wants to pay for your gas fees, someone will be able to transfer your tokens, direct debit, contracts with authorization, and spend your tokens with authorization. All right, so that's the difference. Hopefully this helps clarify it. We are working with this, so I just want to make sure that it's clear. I want to make sure that it's clear for you. I wanted to go over this with you. Again, please, please don't hate on this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I promise there won't be too many of these whiteboards. I got to work on this, but hopefully this is better. Hopefully the idea is here. The idea should be clear. You know, the animation is not so good, but, but the idea should be better now. And, uh, you know, if you have more questions, go to the Discord, go to the community and hash it out, hash it out, just step by step, just hash it out and you'll figure it out. Uh, all right, so let's get back to it. That's it on a little focus study on transfer versus transfer from, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So now that we have our before hook set up here, let's just add a couple more assert, let's, let's add a couple more tests to verify that our decentral bank is also loading up because we've gone the we've done the tether deployment the reward token we haven't done that one and then also to make sure that we have tokens in our decentral bank we should have a million reward tokens we should have a million reward tokens because remember remember when the customer is going to be depositing money they're going to be staking that money into our application and then in return we're going to be rewarding them so we need to have those reward tokens so let's write those tests so the first thing we want to do is write another test here very similar to the other two so we can just copy and paste the describe right and instead of reward token this is going to be our decentral bank deployment and you know what you know what I didn't write deployment next reward token let's just do that just for the writing sake uh, and we're gonna match the name so over here the constant name is going to be the central bank right and that's gonna grab it from up here right we have the central bank and the central bank loads before we do the descriptions over here so let's do that okay and next up let's see that we've got some money in this bank that we can be allocating. So all we have to do here is we'll just write it. Um, there are tokens, or we can even say contract has tokens. And we're gonna run async again pattern over here. And what are we gonna, and how exactly are we going to write the logic to check that our decentral bank has these tokens? Well, we need to check that it has the reward token specifically, right? So what we can do is we can create a balance like this, and we're going to wait. And, what are, and what's the balance we're actually checking for? Well, it's the reward token balance, right? So what we want to do is we can do reward dot balance of reward, sorry, I'll say balance of and decentral bank dot address, right? So this is going to be a variable. So we could just do let balance. And we're only going to use it once, so we don't need to put it on top. So we're going to await the balance of our rewards in the decentral bank address, right? Makes sense. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. If not, don't worry. If not, don't worry too much. We're going to see that in action. And so to complete this now, we can do an assertion to run that it's equal. So we can say assert, oops, I don't know why it just randomly did that, assert dot equal, and we want to check equal. And what do we want to check to be equal here? The balance, right? So balance, balance, and what do we want it to be equal to? Well, we want to be able to have a million reward uh, tokens right in the bank because we're getting the total supply so we want to bring in tokens and we set the amount and luckily we don't have to put in a ton of zeros because of our special helper function one two three four five six okay let's save that awesome all right so now let's run the test and this is going to add some tests for us right we had two now we should have four tests two two now we should have uh, now, now we should have more tests to check the name 
of the central bank being equal in the contract as well as the tokens, uh, the transfer of tokens. So let's go ahead back to the terminal and run truffle test. And hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this hole. And oh boy, it looks like we've got a big problem here. Everything just started failing. Now, why is this happening? Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look and see why everything just failed really badly on us, uh, what I could have done wrong here. The first thing is if I scroll up, I see that we're requiring a cert from a console and it's doing this automatically. I'm gonna get rid of that. So if that happened to you, just delete that. We don't need that. Um, second up here, let's check out just these two last tests that we made because everything was working up to this point. So the central bank deployment, right? The name needs to match the central bank. So our name is the central bank. Yep, D central bank, no, D central, just one E. So I had a typo there. Maybe you caught that, hopefully you did. Equal the name to reward token. Okay, so that's a copy paste mistake. We don't want the central bank to equal reward token. We want this to be the central bank. Okay, so that should fix that. Uh, let's look under here. So we create balance to be the reward balance of the decentral bank address, right? And we want to assert that the balance is going to be equal to a million, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, snap. So this needs to be six, right? So let's save this. Make sure this is six zeros. Go back to the terminal and let's run the truffle test again. Token deployment matching, the central bank match name successful, and the contract has the right amount of tokens. And we can just double check that. Uh, if you want, you can go back to the code and add an extra zero or take one away, save it and run the test again. And this time it should fail. Okay, and we see that it fails and that makes sense, right? So if we check where the failure is, it's in the contract has tokens. So that's the fourth test over here that we have rolling or the second part of the third test. And the assertion error here says that it needs to equal this amount. So this is a mistake with our zeros so we can fix that. And after fixing that, awesome. And after fixing that, you can check again, make sure it works. And okay, awesome, this is it. We actually now have done all the groundwork to set up our tests, set up our deployment environments, smart contract functionalities, and all just all and all the groundwork we need to really get to the exciting part of building out our smart contract for our digital bank. So really good job coming this far, sticking with it. The upcoming code now is going to be about the issuing of the tokens, the depositing, some exciting features. So looking forward to getting so looking forward to, to getting into that with you in the next video. Bye bye.